to a Boxing Day Bonanza. The domestic season is back and so are we. Uh, the turkey is now sandwiches and the attention turns once again to the Premier League action. Welcome to Hollywood Balls where even Salt Bay can't get on. It's a big boxing day. Welcome to Super Kevin Campbell. Uh, Super Kev, the best day of the year for football fans. Oh, Pete, it's been a long time coming. And you know what? This is usually the day where all the lads and the, uh, the people get out the house, Pete. You can get out and you can get to football and maybe work a little bit of that turkey of climbing up the stairs to, the, to your seat. <laughs> with a turkey sandwich on the way home as well. Um, before we get into that, because we can't wait, it has, as you said, it's been a long time coming. But what a way to spend that break with football, um, and what a World Cup it was. As we sit, as we sit now, Kevin, look back at it. A lot of people, you know, raising their eyebrows at it, and know oh, the first one in the Middle East. But what a World Cup uh, on and off the pitch. Hey, look, I, I know there was a, there's been a bit of negativity beforehand, um, etc., about certain things that we can't control. But let me tell you, as a tournament, I thought it was, I thought it was very good. And um, the fact of the matter is, it went seamlessly. We were some great games. There was upsets. There was, there was all sorts going on. And to cap it off, Pete, that final. Oh. Well, well, it was the best final I've. It was the best World Cup final I've seen. Um, I've got to say, two teams going at it, two top players. Messi weren't to be denied on the on the day, obviously, but that just goes to show, passing on the torch won't be long. No, <laughs> Mbappe it, it, special. It won't, and there's clips come out since Kev, but that Mbappe sort of at half time as well, where he was saying, and and you could see. The clip came out after, obviously, but you could see where he was getting at. You know, he, he was like, give me the ball and, and you know, we're still in this if we can get a goal. And everything he said at half time came to fruition. But like you said, when you've got Messi on, on the other side, they just it was just that, just that uh, too much. But he wasn't to be denied. It was a sort of a dream ending for Argentina, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a, was a dream ending for Messi. Um, incredible the way he... He willed the team. Obviously, uh, you know, Maradona passed away, sadly. And, uh, you know, that he's the next one, isn't he? Let's be honest. He's the next He's the next superstar to, to lift the country. And um, incredible. But you know what? You see, France weren't really in the game no. for 70 minutes. And then all of a sudden, Mbappe explodes. And before you blink, it's two each. And then they get pegged back again. And Mbappe comes up with... You know, it's it was it was it really was edge of the seat stuff. It was brilliant, and you know what, the little king won, didn't he? Yeah. Messi, the little king won. So Absolutely. fair play. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of two teams going at it, let's just sort of round up so we can come into this rebirth of the Premier League on, with a clean slate. Carabao Cup reaction. Two teams going at it. Liverpool and Manchester City. That you, you'd think they'd never been away. They just literally went at it, didn't they? Yeah, they went for the throats, didn't they? That's what these two teams do. I think they're both set up to hurt each other the way their systems work. So Manchester City, you know, tend to go try and get their noses in front, especially at, at home. But Liverpool just, they, you know, they can't shake them off. They just keep coming back at you. That's one of these, that's one of the great traits about this Jurgen Klopp Liverpool. They just keep coming back at you. Ended up, obviously, Manchester City winning the game. But you know, Liverpool had some chances, Pete. Let's be they did. Nunes, they did. Nunes, you know, he could, he's gonna look at that and think, What's what how come I haven't scored today? You know, maybe it's bad finishing or a little bit of bad luck here and there, but you know, Liverpool were well in the game. They they were speaking of Nunes as well. I mean, the, the talk at the start of the season would it be him or Haaland? You look at Haaland and then you look at Nunes. Nunes just like needs a little polishing, doesn't he? Um, but there's 
I mean, the pace, the pace of him as well in there is frightening. But ha- Haaland, obviously, who's been sitting on his thumb for a month, was 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 raring to go. Yeah, he's hungry, isn't he? He's hungry. He wants to get back. He wants to he wants to do the business at City, doesn't he? That's that's for sure. And, you know, look, when you've got a Kevin De Bruyne playing like that, Pete, you know, you've got you've got every chance to 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 score loads of goals anyway. But I, I think Darwin Nunes. I think you, you, you talk about a little bit of polish and a little bit of getting used to it. He's going to be a, he's going to be some player for Liverpool, I think, yeah. in the future. I really do. Agreed. Big special mention to Charlton, by the way. Um, really, really massive result for them, and they've been rewarded uh, with a trip to Old Trafford. So a, yeah. a magical, magical tie for them. Yeah, listen, they dispatched Brighton on penalties, didn't they? Tough game. They saw it through. And then, you know, you get to, to play against Manchester United at Old Trafford. I'm sure some of their players, you know, would have never been to Old Trafford. They've probably only watched it on TV. So it's a fantastic day out for everybody. You know, and in, in the cup, Pete, you just never know. So if you they, never know. Right. Hey, fair play. They've got a, they've got a punter's chance, Pete. They've got a punter's chance. Uh, they got that. Oh, it's a great, great day out for their fans. The other, the others, obviously, w- would look at home ties. Newcastle got a home tie, which is probably about all you can ask for. Yeah. Uh, first quarter final. I would say it's in sixteen or seventeen years they will face Leicester. Um, and you know, Kev apart, Manchester City apart. There's there's some there's some huge names being knocked out of that tournament. So. As it progresses, it's a different season all around, isn't it? You sort of come off the back of a World Cup. Two days later, you've got a last 16 of a League Cup. And now, today, uh, we're back. We're back into into the Premier League, the Boxing Day fixtures. And first up, straight after this show, uh, what a sort of, uh, what a taster for the next few days. You've got Brentford and Spurs. Yeah, big game. Huge game, Pete. For, for both of these teams, I think. Um uh, Ivan Tony might this might be one of his last games. You just never know. You yeah. know, is he suspended? Will he get? Will he he's probably going to get a lot of games? So let's see how it let's see how it pans out. Spurs have to hit the ground running, don't they? You know, second half of the season, players away, come back. You need that win. Brentford at home, very difficult team to break down. Yeah, and um, I think it's going to be I think it's going to be a really really tough game, Pete. Really tough game for both sides. The other thing as well, Kev, not just for Brentford and Spurs, but for for other teams apart from those possibly who who did have midweek action and a game under their belt already, is that we don't really know, as in Project Reset, if you cast your mind back, which this is like a mini Project Reset, we don't really know how the teams are going to cope with the restart, do we? No, we don't. And that's, you know, if you've got a game under your belt, you would like to think, Pete, that you've got an edge. But that ain't necessarily the case because, you know, t- you don't know what teams have been doing in the background. Um, having They've been having behind closed doors games, etc. You know, they might be just like a coil spring. So it's going to be interesting to see who comes out of this Boxing Day fixtures on top. It's a massive, you say it's a massive game for both, but I, mean, I suppose there's probably more pressure on Spurs, isn't there? There seems to be pressure on Spurs and on Conte, I, I find that w- with watching Spurs. There's just something that they're not happy about, even though the Champions League's progress, they're fourth in the league. There's something there that those fans just, that they're not, I can't quite put my finger, similar to Chelsea. I mean, w- w- what is it? Because Conte sort of exasperated, isn't he? He, he, he? I don't think he knows either. Well, look, I, I think Spurs are synonymous with quality football, you know, p- playing up expansive football, Pete. And I, I, I've spoken to a few of my Spurs pals and um, they've said to me that getting the results, yeah, th- is fine. But the football has been, you know, it's been difficult to watch at times, Pete. They haven't been great and they tend to find themselves down and then they have to... They have to kick on in the second half of games, especially at home most of the time. And it's it, it's not easy on the eye. Let's put it that way. It's been a grind. So I think that's that's the issue. Conte, he wins his way, doesn't he? He, he? he does things in a certain way. But the Spurs fans, if you keep winning, you know, they'll accept it to a point. But if things go against you, Pete, and this is going to be the big test, if things start going against you and you're not playing well, you know, they, they, they could turn very quickly. Um, someone who's had a game this week and also 
in in the layoff as well as is my team Newcastle. Um, they did what they had to do against Bournemouth. And whatever Eddie Howe says, Kev, I had this conversation on the Newcastle podcast this week with Robbie mm-hmm. Elliott, by the way. I said, whatever Eddie said about it wasn't a warm-up for the Premier League, it, it is, um, <laughs> because it's a game under their belt. Um, mm-hmm. But they go they go to Leicester, again, you know, in, in, in good form, another clean sheet. And, of course, whatever anyone says, they had that workout during the World Cup as well. They had their Saudi training camp and they had a game against Al-Halal as well. So uh, looking good, but Leicester are a different Leicester than the, the, the end of uh, just b- before the break there. Yeah, Leicester have been resurgent. And you know what? The, the World Cup probably came at the wrong time for Leicester because they were, they were on a, a real roll. Listen, who knows what they're going to be like now, although they, they won. Um, yeah, it, it, their 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 uh, cup tie as well, pretty convincingly. So, again, Newcastle going to their 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 patch today, and um, you know Newcastle have got it all to do because Newcastle want to stay in that top four. Pete, you know what it, you know how much it will mean to Newcastle to have to have a battle for that top four, and if you're going to stay there, you've got to kind of you've got to get points or you've got to get something coming from Leicester. That hard work starts now for Eddie Hat with Newcastle, really, if they want to imagine this dream, because people are people are talking about it. So naturally, you know, you sit in third, going coming back into the second half of the season. It's only going to get tougher, and, and, and especially with this the, the festive fixtures coming, and there's a there's a special fixture for you and I coming uh, in in a couple you know, less than less than fourteen days, and I want to I want to have a look at that a bit later. But Newcastle, like you say. Th- to be in that position, they have to deliver constantly, don't they? That's what it's all about in that well, area. That's, Pete, that's the name of the game. That's the name of the game. If you want to be up there, you want to be challenging, you want to be qualifying for Champions League or Europa, whichever one, you know, where you finish at the end, you've got to be delivering week in, week out. That's the name of the game. And and, and it's all new for Newcastle under yeah. Eddie Howe, um, where the pressure's going to be on, the expectation's going to be there because of the way Newcastle have performed. So, the standards are set. You drop below them standards, then you know the fans aren't going to be happy. Absolutely, um, creating a monster as it goes. <clears throat> Listen, Kev, there's a massive game at the bottom as well uh, today, featuring Everton and Wolves. And when you look at it, when you look at the table, there's literally four points between them. Yeah, this is a, a, again. You know, you talk about must-win games. It's a must-win game for both of these teams. If I'm honest with you, I think Everton, Everton have a desire to win that game because of probably the World Cup came at the right time for Everton because they, they were yeah. leaking goals. They weren't scoring goals. They, you know, they were all over the place at times. So now they've had a chance to, to re, rejig it, uh, rethink things, and, and they're going to want to come out the blocks and get these three points. They're at home. So, you know, Wolves have struggled. Let's be honest. They've really struggled. So Everton will see this as three points, but, you know, Wolves going to want to get back on the on the horse and and get those three points, Pete, because it means so much to get three points in the Premier League. N- none of them are easy. Kev, as well, the, the, the only thing that I, I'm going to ask you about Everton is something that Newcastle experienced because they've got such passionate, demanding fans. They are a 12th man. We know that. But when things aren't going well, Wolves could possibly sense that. And, you know, there's a few players have said, that if you can get those fans to turn at Goodison Road, uh, but, but will that play on Wolves? I'm sure that'll be in games, uh, Wolves' game plan, won't it? Pete, one hundred percent. And you know what? We see, we saw the scenes for Everton back in the last season where the fans were right behind the team, no matter what. I think the twelfth man have re- have to realise what a big part they play. It's going to be part of Wolves' game plan for sure. Keep the crowd quiet. Keep them out of it. Get them moaning. Get them groaning. And then the level of confidence in the team, in the Everton team, starts to go down. Once it goes down, Pete, then Wolves want to take over and then they think they can win the game. Uh, Everton have to start with fire. That's what gets the the Goodison Park fans fired up. They have to start with fire, start with passion. And it always helps if you could score an early goal, Pete. You get them going and it would be a difficult day for Wolves. Uh, special day, special day for Connor Cody playing against his former side. Yes, yeah, special day, very special day for him. 
listen, he's been he's been excellent, hasn't he? He's been really, really good for for Everton. Captain, like he was at Wolves, you know, he's captain at, at Everton now. So listen, this is this is one game where I'm sure he knows about most of these players. So there's going to be a few internal conversations going on with him and the manager. Yeah, and and by the way, what a, what a signing for Everton. Uh, they can't, probably can't believe their luck that, that he was available. And, and he's, he's just, it's like he's always been there, isn't it? After yeah, the, it, it is. You know, he's just fitted in uh, seamlessly, hasn't he? And um, listen, he's a blue anyway. So, you know, that's, that's, yeah. that, that helps. But being able to get him, he's a, obviously gone to the World Cup as a as a squad player came back and um I'm sure he's rearing to go Pete I'm sure he's rearing to go but fantastic signing yeah absolutely and, and do, you, do you think that you know when you get signings like that it's just sort of meant to be isn't it I always remember Barry Venison coming uh, to Newcastle and he played at Sunderland and Liverpool and it's sort of a, a like for like it's just sort of bedded straight in and looked like he's always been there yeah listen when you when you come from the area and you know, you get that connection, that feeling for the team. It's huge. It really is huge. And, uh, you know, Connor Cody is just, like I said, he's seamlessly just fitted in, taken a, a, a key role at the club. And, and, you know, Frank Lampard, I think, has done the right thing, making him captain. Great stuff. Listen, um, there's another massive, massive game. And it's, a, it's one of those late games. It's going to be a London night. Really looking forward to it. Um, Arsenal, West Ham, tasty to say the least, isn't it? Well, there might only be six helicopters in this <laughs> one. Uh, look, season massive, of goodwill. Yeah, season of goodwill and all that. Um, huge, huge game. Uh, uh, let me start with West Ham because I think West Ham haven't haven't even really found their feet this season. They've only found their feet in Europe, Pete. They haven't really found their feet in the Premier League as much. And they've spent money. Um, obviously, investment's been gone in, but there have been injuries. There's been a lack of form. And they haven't looked like the, the West Ham over the last couple of seasons. But they're still very dangerous. We know what type of players they are. Speaking about Arsenal, Pete, Arsenal have lost Gabriel Jesus in the World Cup. Yeah. And now you're looking at Eddie and Ketia. There's going to be a lot of pressure on him. But, you know, the rest of the team should be about right. So, you know, I expect Arsenal to win this one. It's going to be a tough game. But at home, I expect Arsenal to get the job done. That's for sure. And just... just uh, speaking about Eddie Nketi, I mean, he, if you remember in that documentary as well, he he sort of expressed his wish that he, he wanted a chance, um, as all players do. Of course, they think they they can do it. Um, again, it's, it's it's landed on him. But do you think that Arsenal will will have a look in that January transfer window, Kep, which is just around our corner? Well, Pete, let me tell you this: Arsenal, ha Arsenal are five points clear at the top going into the first round of games after the World Cup. They have to invest in the squad. The squad is not strong enough. I mean, God forbid Eddie Ketchy goes down. What happens then? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's really the numbers in certain positions are not right. And um, one of the worst things that could happen did happen. Jesus went down. So I think Arsenal are going to have to get some more firepower. You know, they're talking about Mudrick and... There's even talk about Vlaovic and all these guys. But Arsenal definitely have to get two, three, even four players if they can. Bring them in. Um, João Felix has been mentioned as well on loan. I just think Arsenal have to... When you, very rarely you're in this position that they're in, Pete. So while you're there, you've got to strengthen and strengthen well. It's a difficult one to just go out and replace because it's not like he's a position, Jesus, because... He brings so much more to the team, Kev. Every, everything that he does sort of solidifies Arsenal. You can you can see his sort of positivity flows through that team. So it's not just a case, is it, of going out and getting someone who can score goals? I mean, it, it's it's a special it's a special player. Yeah, look, Pete, his goal ratio hasn't been great, but, but his all round game makes. Makes Saka better, makes Martinelli better, it makes Xhaka better, it makes Martin Erdegaard better, it makes Thomas Partey better. You know, he is a catalyst for this team and he's one of the main reasons why this team are, are five points clear. So, for me, 
I just think, listen, you, you, you have to, you, you're going to have to give something up. But you know what? If you're going to, if Eddie's going to come in there, at least score a few goals. You know what I mean? Score a few goals. Your all round game isn't the same, but score a few goals and that'll help. Good stuff. Listen, just to, just to break up the sort of previews, but I, I saw something in the news last week, just before Christmas, literally uh, before Christmas Eve, and I wanted to, it sort of resonated with me, and it's something that you had mentioned way back on this show. That's because we're always ahead of the game. Uh, Howard Webb, in his new capacity, say he would welcome former players uh, to get involved as referees um, for the for the Premier League, we had that discussion with Keith Hackett. I think he invited you. He said you you would you would do that, Kev. Uh, Howard Webb's come out with that now. I'm not surprised, Pete. I'm not surprised when you look at some of the decisions that get made, some decisions that get made, and some that don't get made. Um, you know, it's it's not right. Listen, I've been I've been against VAR from the start. VAR yep. still playing games in the World Cup, even the first game. You remember the first game? The first goal got got chalked off. And and we were we were having a laugh, weren't we? But we were like, where's the where's the where's the issue? There was no issue. But Pete, here we go. We're back at the Premier League. And I, I think there's a severe lack of real quality referees. There used to be a there used to be a load, a raft of quality referees. There aren't. Do they understand the game as much yet? Yeah, fair enough, you, you you know the rules, but understanding the game, understanding the players, I think players will have a lot of respect for ex-players as referees. Um, but it's to where the power lies, I think, Pete. That's where the issue is going to be because those in the VAR ain't ex-players. If so, if the ex-player is on the pitch and the VAR dictates to the ex-player, it takes away his power. So again, which is what it's doing currently. Yeah, which is what it's doing currently. So you know, swapping like for like won't make no difference if the power within VAR doesn't change. You say you know it's not about the the actual rules and the decisions; it's about players understanding. It's it's funny because you know, as a fan, when there's something wrong on the pitch because of the players' reaction. You know, if it, if you see six or seven or eight players after a tackle's been made, the referees missed the tackle. But you can see the players, yeah. and and that means they know they so they know what's going on. And I think having having that sort of help, um, interesting as Howard Webb said, it wouldn't have to be like a top top level player because obviously they've got punchy duties. And so I I think given the way Howard's looking at it, it's it's obviously something that they 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 they're keen on. As he says, though, Kev, he's probably right, isn't he? It just needs someone with an understanding of how players play the game. Yeah, yeah, there, there is. And not only understanding of how they play the game, how they think, how players think as well. Um, but, you know, if you're going to put a play, if you're going to put an ex player on the pitch, Pete, and you're right, you don't have to be a top player. A player who's played at a decent level can get it. But I think in that VAR room, you need an ex player as well. And that's what will shake things up because yeah. we're still seeing weird decisions going on on VAR. <laughs> Need something else in that VAR room as well, if it's down to me. Uh, got, got, Kev, I've got to put you on the spot there. Is it something you would consider doing? Pete, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> but, Pete, but, Pete, here's yeah. the thing. I, I wouldn't do it because um, I've, I've, got to, I've got that many things going on with sure. stuff. But if I didn't, it would be something I would consider, not necessarily being a, a ref on the pitch, but to be one of the guys in that VAR room, I think that is really important. That's the critical one for me, Kev. That's the critical. I'm going to keep uh, fans of Hollywood balls. I'll keep working on our Kev and seeing if we can get him as uh, the VAR. Then I'll have someone to WhatsApp and really complain about <laughs> when the games are on uh, instead of me just moaning to him. Well, would there be As one I, condition I don't do Newcastle games? Yeah. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Listen, as I say, a raft of games, Boxing Day. We move on from Boxing Day. Um, what I love about this sort of, I'm, I'm calling it uh, Project Restart number two, Kev, mm. is that there's games all throughout throughout the week, um, a, a sort of smattering of games. Tuesday the 27th as well um, sees Chelsea against Bournemouth. Again, 
likening Chelsea to Spurs just something that people aren't pop- there's first murmurs of is Potter out of his depth is you know the Chelsea don't look like they're playing well they they finished off uh, with a poor result they weren't great at Newcastle be, be, before the World Cup started what, what's going on at Chelsea again it's, a, it's listen Graham Potter's gone in there and he's find it he's, he's, he's taken he's going to take a bit of time for him to find the team that he yeah. he wants to play and sometimes these things do take time sometimes they just click together but it hasn't happened for Chelsea like that all season they haven't looked convincing and obviously you know bro has just gone down in the last game hasn't he injured out for the season which is a which is a blow for them so pot has got he's got to try and find some common ground and he's got to try and win some games Pete that's the thing I think he's a good appointment but just like anything Pete when you're in a little bit of a transition you still got to win games to to to, to convince the fans and uh, yeah, I was they're, just say struggling. They, they're just struggling they a little bit that time are you no you're not well sometimes you're not afforded that time and I, let me tell you something Bournemouth are going to go there thinking do you know what we might be able to get something from this game uh, special mention to Bournemouth by the way played well at Newcastle played very well before the World Cup break credit to Gary O'Neill I, I, I like watching him in a press conference no airs and graces tells it how it is I think they've done well in in, in trusting uh, Gary O'Neill. Look, they've done well. I, I I like Gary O'Neill. I think he's uh he's taken the reins and 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 made a mockery of you know Bournemouth ain't good enough. They've they've showed that they're good enough yeah. to compete in the leagues, and and that's all you can do at the end of the day. If the worst happens, the worst happens. But you've got to be able to compete. But you know they've they've done pretty well. T- tough tough task at Chelsea because if Chelsea hit their stride, they could beat anybody. But I think they go into this game thinking, listen, guys, we can get something out of this. Because Chelsea, we can we can get Chelsea's fans to turn, just like, you know, we're talking about Wolves at Everton. We could stay in the game for long periods and not concede. We'll get our chances. OK. Um, also, one of your old sides, Forrest, go to Man United. It's always a, always a great fixture, that one. And then, and then throw into the mix, it's over the Christmas and New Year period. Uh, Forest need results as well, and it's probably it's not the ideal place to be going, is it? Because whisper it quietly, but Man United look like they uh, they're starting to turn a corner. Listen, under Ten Hag, I think he's 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 getting it. He's getting things right, isn't he? He's getting the chemistry. Yeah. You know, he's, he's he's Rashford looks like he's 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 born again, doesn't he? He looked really good. Different player scored a great goal in the week again. Was good with England um, in the World Cup, so. He's got his mojo back, which is great. But, you know, Nottingham Forest tend to have a really good... They've got a really good record at Old Trafford. And, you know, Mr. Cooper and and the Forest boys, they're starting to find their feet in the Premier League. And maybe, Pete, the World Cup came at a bad time for them because they were picking yeah. up results. Agreed. So, Agreed. obviously, they, they won in the week. They won away at Blackburn. And, mm. you know, I always look at that as a gauge, Pete. Last year, you were playing championship football. You were playing against the, uh, the Blackburns of this world. This year, you play them in the cup and you blow them away at their, at their place. So the level of their play has gone up. It's going to be a tough one. Obviously, it's going to be a tough one. But again, stay in the game. You make it difficult for Manchester United. You don't concede and you try and sneak one. Um, because it's such a fragmented fixture list, it means that you know at the top and bottom, people are going to have their eyes on other games. Um, Wednesday, twenty uh, eighth, sees a, a cracker. Leeds, Man City. Uh, does you know what, Kev? Doesn't matter where Leeds are, how they're playing. On a Wednesday night at Elland Road, all the best. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Leeds v Manchester. It's going to be seven helicopter jobs. Listen, let me tell you something. This is a great, great game. Leeds, you know what they play. They play with so much energy. They play with a vibrancy. They play attacking football with bite. Now, Manchester City, you know, they've got the guile. They've got the, they've got the tenacity. They've got the know-how how to beat anybody in the world, Pete. It's going to be a fascinating game. I think Leeds are going to give a good account of themselves. But I just, I just think Manchester City are going to have a little bit too much. 
listen, I might be surprised. Leeds might just go after them and go for the jugular and get something. But I just think Manchester City, the way that De Bruyne and Haaland link together, that, that's going to that's gonna be the defining factor. I think you're right. I think Leeds will go for it, but I think there'll be goals. And I think, you know, it could be one of those sort of six threes where, you know, City open do up, that. Open the back door. You open the back door to City and they just cut through you, don't they? So, yeah. They do. They do. Uh, Friday the uh, of the week 30th, literally, Liverpool-Leicester. Uh, and again, speaking to our good friend from Arab News, Ali Khalid, he, he says he's scratching his head with Liverpool. He just thinks they've turned a corner and uh, they were out warm weather training here in Dubai. He, he went to see them. Uh, they, they they played well against Milan. They didn't look so good against the French side. He said they just leave him scratching his head at the minute. But, but they've got work to do because of a team of their standard that they're way below currently where they should be. Yeah, well, results-wise, but the big test for me was how they performed against Man City. Yep. When you saw how they performed, that was that was like Liverpool. That was Liverpool. But the the problem is they tend to do that against the big sides. They perform against the big sides and kind of struggle, whether it's motivation or where I'm not too sure um, against some of the other sides. So, you know, we remain to see how Liverpool are going to be in the second half after we start. Listen, there's three things on New Year's Eve in Newcastle um, that, that would go together. So first is that it's New Year's Eve in the city of Newcastle. The secondary element to that is um, whenever Newcastle play Leeds, it's always electric. Uh, throw that together and put Newcastle versus Leeds on New Year's Eve. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fire. Fire. VIP ticket. You'll have to fight to get into the city centre, never mind into St. James's yeah. Park. Listen, it's going to be unbelievable. It's Listen, this is one of the old school games, isn't it? A real old school game. And you know what, Pete? You've got the, you've got the triumvirate there, haven't you? Yeah. New Year's Eve, <laughs> massive game. And it's in Newcastle, by God. Absolute, it's going to be an absolute fantastic game. Two teams who play with a lot of energy, who like to play on the front foot. I think there's going to be goals in that game, Pete. Leeds, Leeds tend to just go for it anyway. And if they go for it against Newcastle, there's going to be goals. And Newcastle don't concede much, so it's going to be interesting how they approach it. Good stat for you as well. Um, pointed out to Rob Elliott this week. There's all the talk at Newcastle is, is of course, of, of Miguel Almiron um, and his amazing run pre-World Cup. And, of course, that of Bruno Gimarash being the master. Someone going quietly about his business at the back there is Sven Botman. And the stat is this, Kev. He's played 17 games for Newcastle United and they've never been beaten every time he plays. I'm touching wood here as I, yeah. as I talk to you. Um, out of those, it's... Pete, it's I ain't. Win. <laughs> 13 wins and four draws. Uh, there's no... Um, I said to Robbie Elliott, you know, you, you give that to Sven. He said, it's the whole... It's the whole back four at Newcastle, of course. But that's a that's a major stat um, in, in the mould of Van Dyke, isn't it? Yeah, it's a huge stat. And you need you need leaders and you need players who make a difference back there. I, I, I watch Botman and I see he's got that aggressive nature in him to go. You know when players go in short, he's got that aggressive nature to go all the way after them and, and win the ball off them so you can spring attacks. That makes a huge difference. If you don't have an aggressive centre-half who's happy to come out of the, the back four or back five at times, you, you, you're struggling. He's excellent. And you know what? What a signing he's been, Pete. He's gone under the radar, but you know what? He won't go under the radar second half of the season because I think a lot of people are looking at Newcastle and Sven Botman. Obviously, they're, well, I think Arsenal and, and Newcastle have conceded the least amount in the league joint. So... He's got to take major credit for that. Three transfer windows they were looking at Sven Botman and they finally got their man. Some other New Year's Eve crackers for you. Uh, back with that Manchester uh, East Langs Road divide, Kev. City Everton. Massive, yeah. massive game for both, both, for both sides. Yeah, massive. Listen, massive game. This is one that Everton, Everton need to try and get something. You've got to try and stay in the game because you know what Manchester City, City bring to the table. You know they can pass you off the pitch. They can cut through you if you if you if you if you fall asleep. They'll cut through you. Um, so this is going to be a tough game. 
you know, no love lost in this one. But, you know, Manchester City obviously go into it as, as firm favourites, don't they? Um, and one that I've saved for last on, on, on this day, New Year's Eve, um, it's the Gutters. Uh, fascinating, intriguing trip to Brighton uh, on the South Coast for New Year's Eve. Never an easy place to go at no. the best of times. Uh, no. I like what's happening down at Brighton. I like listening to uh, the, the new gaffer there. He's um, he, he knows what he's about. Yeah, listen, Brighton are one of the the Arsenal bogey sides. They um, are, aren't they? They are. They're a bogey side. Arsenal got away with a nil nil on in in torrential rain last season, and they absolutely battered Arsenal, battered Arsenal last season. So, look, I know it's a it's a new year. This Arsenal side have, have to go places and, and do things that they don't usually do. So being able to go to Brighton, weather a storm and, and win the game, I'm sure many, many Arsenal fans, that's what we want. That's what that's what Mikel Arteta wants. But it's going to be a very tough game because Brighton are a decent side. They know how to play. They've got a good young young team. They've got plenty of energy. And, um, you know, as I said, they're a bogey side for Arsenal. Uh, Kev, I'm going to do what every manager hates to do. I'm going to look ahead. Uh, and, and just You're already say, looking ahead. We're on New Year's exactly. Eve. On New Year's yeah. Day. What's and I'm going, to go, I'm going to go further because I can't not have you on and not talk about possibly uh, what could be the biggest game uh, in this period. If results go well, if, if Newcastle pick up a result at Leicester and, and they do well against Leeds and Arsenal do likewise, then it's a really, really massive Massive game on the 3rd of January at the Emirates, isn't it? Arsenal and Newcastle. It really is, Pete. It's a huge game. They took two top defences, two top teams. Um, probably, if, if, as you say, if both teams win their games, then it's um, really going to be a, it's either a first v second or first v third, isn't it? Yep. Game. So these are the games that you, you, you live for, Pete. Obviously, Newcastle going, be, will be coming to the Emirates. Haven't got a great record at the Emirates, no. I've got to say. But again, this Newcastle team have, have gone to Old Trafford. They've, you know, they they probably could have won the game um, at Old Trafford. Got, got something at Old Trafford. Wherever they go, they tend to make a good account of themselves. And um, you know, they've they've got an eye for goal. So it's going to be a real big, big game. Potential banana skin for Arsenal? Of course it is. But obviously it's one that Arsenal will feel we're at home. We've got to fancy our chances. And we need a bit of revenge after you smashed us up at St. James's end of last season. Yeah, remember that was a bad, bad week for the Arsenal. That Spurs and then and then yeah. that Newcastle. Yeah. That, the, the pressure was. I think the damage was possibly done after the Spurs game. Um, but just on that on that new Arsenal Newcastle game, Kev, it's it's a real measure. This is this is it for Newcastle. This is the biggest. Measure. They're going to the, the, the team who's the top of the table. Top. So the all table. of this all of this business, Kev, of people saying. You know, they've played well, they've done this well, they've done that well. This is the marker, isn't it, when you go to the top, whoever's top of the league? Yeah, it is the marker, Pete. And look, let's be honest, we know there's a there's a bit of football to be played in between this. And that's why we don't really like to jump. But because no. I'm Arsenal and you're Newcastle, we're jumping ahead. Yeah, it is the test, Pete. And do you know what? This is what the likes of the, the Toon Army and the Newcastle players and Eddie Howe, this is what you're in it for. You're in it to challenge at the top, to challenge the best teams. Whoever's top, we want to take you on. And and you, the gauge is what type of result you get. Now, if you come unstuck, then you know we've got a bit more work to do. If you win, well, all of a sudden it's like, oh, I tell you what, we are building something. Momentum's with us. You draw, it's like, okay, we can live with these teams. I think yeah. that's the most important thing, Pete, to know you can live with the teams. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of living, it's more turkey sandwiches for me and Super Kev and Cabell because it is Boxing Day, so we settle down to enjoy the games. Kev, absolutely brilliant to see you and um, enjoy it. And we'll see you next time on Hollywood Balls. Pete, turkey soup. Turkey soup, turkey, turkey curry, soup, turkey, turkey sandwiches. Curry, turkey sardines. <laughs> brilliant. Oh, <laughs>